we had some difficulties uh, installing uh, certain packages in RPI, and one of the main prominent package was TensorFlow. Uh, so while installing TensorFlow, we were unaware of the RAM size or the RAM usage space in in the RPI. We never knew that that the RAM size of the uh, RPI is something that matters for your package to install to be installed. In RPI, there is something called as a RAM size, which which is usually compressed. So you need to expand it by giving some certain set of comments. So we increase the RAM size, we reboot the system, and then we found out that that uh, uh, TensorFlow uh, uh, was installed. Initially, we had a lot of false det detections uh, while developing the product. The, the system used to fall chip trigger. So we 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 refined the model, we refined the data set. And we also found out that there is uh, the test size and, and the train size with that, that use in uh, machine learning the concept is something that is extremely crucial because uh, that is what matters the accuracy or uh, the, the amount of false detections the system is going to uh, encounter. So we tried out a number of permutation combinations. We tried something like 60, 40, 60% training, 40% testing. Then the, we gradually increased it to some 70, 30, 80, 20, 90, 10. And we found out that this 70, 30 model, the 70% uh, training size and the 30% testing size was, was an appropriate model that we could uh, finalize. And we found out that the false rate detections were like the minimal. We hardly found any false detections. We had to refine the code every now and then, where some code is uh, is compatible with your PC, with your personal computer, but uh, the other code is not compatible with uh, with your uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. So we have to make some certain changes because uh, our Pi runs on Linux and your, our computer usually uh, runs on Windows. Our initial uh, plan was to just uh, scan the uh, to scan just the image or to scan the video and just show that it was the output. But when that kind of did not work out because the frame speed was too high in the video, the the algorithm used to get uh, used to be confused of of what kind of frame is it. Then they gave an advice saying that okay, see, you can actually capture the frame itself and then send it for processing instead of sending the entire video for processing. And that really worked. That that worked out to be true, and that uh, and we could sub submit that as the output to be in in the output video itself. We had a lot of uh, instances where our morale used to be kind of down because we, we used to work for like six seven hours a day, and this used to be on a daily basis. On a weekly basis, when you when you used to interact with our mentors, they they used to really boost our morale up. To so creating a Discord server where we could interact with mentors, we could also interact with uh, like DM experts too, disaster management experts too. That was not something that you get very often or very you see very often in any kind of national competitions. Many of us kind of lose the balance between uh, academics and uh, kind of project. What we learned here in UIC2 is we learned how to manage these two uh, blocks. Something that is quintessential for, a, for an engineering uh, graduate. You just can't be an academic uh, studying 9 CPA and uh, sit in an interview without you know, without an experience of projects. Or neither can you have just projects in your name and have a very low CPA. Have the passion in your hearts, but at the same time, uh, make sure that uh, you are balancing other key factors in your life equally as well. Make sure that you any opportunity that is thrown upon you, or uh, that you are going to get it, just grab it into hands and make sure you explore it and exploit it at the fullest, no matter what.